Hallelujah. Isn't God awesome? Amen. His word will never fail. That's why it's still in my hand. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 He's so awesome. God is so awesome. And people don't, sometimes people don't, the, the human mind, I'll say, humanity, doesn't understand the spirit realm. There's a scripture in the Bible, in, in 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2, we don't want to go to it right now, but the scripture talks about how the natural mind cannot comprehend the things of God. Are y'all here? The natural mind cannot comprehend the things of God. What's a natural mind? That's the state of being of the average person. The average person has a natural mind. The state of being of the average human being. All right? Average people think the same way. The reason why we know that is because they talk the same way. Are y'all here? They have the same language. They have the same tone. If, if you get angry with them and you say something smart to them, just, just barely a little down. If you, if you get smart with them, no, they don't get smart back. If you have a, a negative vibe toward them, you know what they do? They give you a negative vibe back. That's normal humanity. That's the humanity of the average person. That's the humanity of people who don't have any spiritual perception. Are y'all here? People with no spiritual perception, that's their, um, that's their, I don't hear nothing. Thank you, dear. Appreciate that. That's their uh, perception. When people have a low mentality, all they have to respond with is low mentality. So you can't get something high from something low. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Who feel me? You can't get intelligence from a fool. You can't get wisdom from somebody who's ignorant. Wisdom comes from God. So if you need some advice and you're married, don't go to a woman who don't believe in being married. Don't go to a man who don't believe in being married. Don't get husband advice from Pimp Willie. Okay. Are y'all with me? Y'all feel me? Yes. Don't get wife advice from, from a woman who's, you know, you know, not wanting to be married. Come on. She be going to tell you, Tell your husband this. Who do you think you are? It's the big star. You're never going to get my love. It's the big star. Tell him that. That's the kind of advice she'll give you. Why? Because she's on that level. Your mind has to be elevated. Your mind has to be elevated. Before you are elevated in your spirit, well, before you comprehend spiritual elevation, let me put it like that. Your mind has to be trained to understand spiritual principles. Are y'all here? See, the scripture said the gifts of God are without repentance. Yes. That means what God gives you, he gives it to you the day you're born. Let me make, let me make a statement here. Now, I'm just going to say this because it's true. How many of y'all love truth? You love truth? All right, you want truth, then put your seatbelt on. I'm going to say this only because it's true. You know, most churches and most pastors and most preachers they always want to tell you who's going to hell. Am I right or right? You're right. How many of y'all been to any church before ever in your life? Yeah. All right? If you've been to church more than once, you heard a preacher say, you're going to hell. Your whole family going. I'm afraid of everybody. They're all going to hell. What's in us that makes us want to determine somebody's destiny? What is it in me that I'm so concerned about where you're going? What, what is that? Is that because I want company? It must be. You know, why am I so concerned about somebody going to hell? But if you notice, that's the most, that's the most preached doctrine. I got a message for it. It's called, it's called holiness or hell. Or turn or burn. Now, now here's the statement I want to make. It's kind of controversial, but it's truth. And y'all say y'all want truth. The scripture says. Yahshua told the disciples, he told them, don't rejoice because demons are cast out. Did he say that? Yeah. Don't rejoice because you healed the sick or you raised the dead. Yeah. Did he tell them that? Because yeah. they came back to him and they were happy, they were excited. 
Because they said, Lord, you told us to cast out devils and devils are coming out. You told us to open blinded eyes and it's happening. So tell me what it is he told them to rejoice about. He said, don't rejoice because of that, but rejoice because of this. What is it? What was it? Who knows? Nobody knows? Come on, Bible scholars, where y'all at? All y'all who want to correct me at Bible study, where you at, though? Y'all be correcting me doing Bible study Sunday morning. Where you at? I ain't calling no names, Rocky. I'm just talking. I ain't calling no names. I'm just talking. All right. Now, check this out. Now, now check this out. Let me help you. Okay? The scripture says, rejoice because your name is written in the hands of your life. Remember that. All right? Why did he tell you rejoice? Because your name is what? Written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, now check this out. When he said that, who was there? Judas was right there. Hi, now y'all help me with that. Judas was right there when he said that. How can how can he say rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life if Judas was there? Was Judas' name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Hello, saints. I thought he was going to hell with gasoline draws on. Your mama going to hell. <laughs> I'm just saying. But Judas was standing right there. Let me explain this to you. The reason why he said rejoice because the name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and Judas was standing right there. I got news for all you religious people. I got news for all these theologians that are philosophically correct in the word of God. All the philo, how do you say it? Philosophical. Philosophical. Thank you, thank you. I knew you'd come through. <laughs> the philosophical people. He said, rejoice because the name written in the Lamb of Life, Judas is right there. Judas is the one who betrayed him. I'm right, right. You're right. So why did he say his name is written in the Lamb of Life? Hear this, people. Learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. The best thing about understanding God is when you can correctly understand what his word says. He said that because everybody who's ever born, their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and it stays there until they die when the determination is made whether it remains or whether it's blotted out. Yes. Book of Revelation talks about all those whose names were what? Blotted out from the book. So when you're alive, as long as you got breath, you have an opportunity to repent. As long as you can breathe, as long as you're still alive, the opportunity for repentance is there for you. The scripture says the grace of God that has appeared to all men has appeared to who? All men. So he said that because Judas was still alive. Yes. Now I know we want to put the brother in hell so quick. Give me the match, Lord. I'll throw it into the gasoline or lake of fire. That's what we want to do. We want, we're so critical. We're so condemning. When the scripture says God is what? Love. We're so condemning. When what we should be doing is operating in love. The scripture says also, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. God draws us with his love. I'm saved because the love of God drew me to him. Amen. The love of God, his love and his compassion was better than what I was facing. Facing 64 years in prison. And God's love came and set me free. It wasn't last week either. Just in case. Somebody wondering. We were letting go a little 40 years ago now. I was preaching in San Diego, California. Now I get to my scriptures. I was preaching in San Diego, California back in the 90s. And I gave my testimony about how I got saved and what happened and, and what all I did. And what, I gave my whole testimony, right? Thinking people would be blessed and say, oh, wow, praise God. What a miracle. Nope. I was at a religious church and I forgot. Right. After service, the preacher tells me, so, uh, Reverend, how long ago did this happen? Oh, and I almost... The Holy Ghost had to help me, brother, because I almost said last month. <laughs> Just to mess with him. <laughs> Just to mess with him. I did. I almost said last month. I said, man, that was back in 1979, 1980. Oh, 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 oh. Like, you don't know what a testimony is? How long have you been a pastor? <laughs> the Bible says you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Amen. What kind of church is that where you can't even give a testimony people are scrutinizing and, and wondering. Wow. Anyway, y'all forgive me for being me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So 
start with the book of Hebrews. I want to talk about something quickly. I got about seven minutes and 14 seconds. All right? I got about seven minutes and 14 seconds. I want to get this done. Now, notice, now if, 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 we, if we really be honest with ourselves, most human beings, I, I don't think that I, I've ever met anybody, maybe, maybe one or two, I just can't think of them right now. Most human beings who have ever been a sinner, how many of y'all have been a sinner before? How many of you have ever sinned? You say, have I ever seen anything? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was born. Well, 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 she didn't raise her hand before, but she said, I got you, Apostle. Yeah, you yeah. said. Yeah. Right, right, right. She got, she got me twice. Now, now, but there are some people who, you know, kind of feel like they're, they, you know. But anyway, my point is, if you have ever sinned in your life, or if you have ever been in sin before, notice that there are sometimes lasting effects of sin. Do you know what residue is? How many of y'all know what residue is? Mm -hmm. Residue is the thing that's a result of the thing that happened. Residue ain't the thing. Are y'all here? But residue is proof that the thing was there. You ever been in a house that was caught on fire and it had all that black stuff on the walls and on the ceiling? What they call that stuff? Soot. You, you see the soot, you wasn't there, but you see the soot and you can smell it. So you know at one point there was a fire in the house. That's how some of us are as human beings. We're not in that situation no more. We're not in that predicament no more. But you can feel it all around us. There's soot all around us. Back in the early 90s, back when I was a, a, a young single preacher, looking good and preaching good. I had to throw that in. And I, I was preaching uh, all over the country. And this, they was trying to hook me up with this woman. They were like, oh, we got the perfect woman for you. I was like, oh, yeah. Bring it, bring it, bring it. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I don't understand preachers, mother. I don't understand it. I'm going to say it because it's true. I don't understand brothers who are pastors and you are single for 20 years. What's wrong with you, man? I think you're down on myself. All the ladies in the church, you go to most churches, there's a hundred women and two men. And you can't find no wife. You better look under the chair or something, look in the closet, or pull the curtain back. What? I don't, I don't get it, people. Y'all, I need help. I don't understand how a brother can be single 25, 35, 45 years when I'm looking for a wife. Well, you're looking in the wrong place, my brother. I kind of think you don't want no woman. Yeah, I'm saying it because I got the mic in my hand. I think you might be going the other way secretly. Don't take that long for all them. You got women falling at your feet. And ain't none of them good enough. Yeah. I smell a closet. <laughs> I'm just saying. But anyway, they was trying to hook me up with this woman. And uh, finally, I got a chance to talk to her on the phone. I told uh, the woman who, you know, my friend, Evangelist, I ain't going to call her name. She actually lives in Arizona now. But I ain't going to call her name. She said, Apostle, she's perfect for you, blah, blah, blah. So we got on the phone. She called me, answered the phone, <coughs> put my very white voice on. Yes, no show. Yes, this is Apostle Weston. How many if I help this dial? Got real deep and holy. You know, I got real deep and holy. And this woman actually said to me, she said to me, she says, we talked for about five minutes. Then she asked me a question. I was like, oh. and y'all got to help me because I lied. I, this was 1992 or three. I don't know, it was way back, but I lied, but I repented. Well, y'all look at me. I, I repented already. Okay? She says, Do you beat women? And I said, Yes, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I beat them all day long. <laughs> and she said, I knew it and hung up on me. I repented. But you know why I did that? I did that because, like, what is in your, what, what is this thing in you? What are you searching for? What are you attracting? You, this woman, I don't know, I don't even remember who she was, but I promise you, if she didn't get delivered, she attracted a man who went right upside her head. Because there's something in us that's working and that's pulling us to the wrong thing. And that something is the result of something that was there before. Amen. Are y'all still with me? There's residue, there's soot, there's evidence of things that were in our life that are still lurking and they are still directing us today. Although I've been saved for 150 years, there's still something in my flesh that's directing me in the wrong direction. How can these things be? Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Because we need to be delivered from things even when we were young, when we were children, things that have happened to us still affect adults. 
when children are between the age of 5 and 12, I believe, well, I can't remember the exact age, but it's really, really young, it says that they're molded for their life during the time, their preteen years. I'm thinking you get molded for life as a teenager or you know, a young adult. No, they said your life is molded as a preteen. Yeah. How can these things be possible? How could it be that, that what I see and what I hear from the age of five, six, seven, eight, nine is cemented in my mind and I'm growing from that? And I'm growing from that. So I remember getting so many uh, disciplinary actions when I was young. How many of y'all give me the ghetto word for disciplinary actions? A whooping. How many of y'all got disciplinary actions before? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Some of y'all ain't never got disciplinary actions. You got spanked. I didn't get spanked. Anybody here over 40? If you're over 40, you got a whooping. Matter of fact, a beating. Thank you. How old are you? 30. 30? Yes, I was raised by my grandma. Uh-oh. Uh, there we go. That, that's good. That, I got a couple. One or two. I'm going to tell y'all. Y'all young ladies. Y'all young niggas don't know nothing about getting a real beat with an extension cord. Come on, people. Thank you. Thank you. Baseball bat in hand, threatening, <laughs> and not joking about it. Pick up a chair or anything and go upside, oops, upside your head. <laughs> and they're not joking about it. Look, I'm telling you. So, so I have got so many disciplinary actions just in case the police is watching. Um, in my spirit, I felt unloved. <laughs> Hear this residue. All the way up until I was a grown man, I felt unloved. I didn't know why. And one day, I, I can't remember what year it was. It was before I moved to Minnesota. So it had to be like 1990, 1988. We was in a men's meeting at my dad's church. Had a men's meeting. And in the men's meeting, in the basement, myself and a lot of my old brothers that were in the Lord back then, Deacon Powell, and it was we was having a meet about 20 of us, sitting in the basement of a dad's church, eating donuts and drinking minute made all the juice and talking about the Lord. And then my dad said, my dad said, anybody in here got anything from their past that you need to be delivered from or you need prayer or anything like that? Okay, and so, so I just, you know, I was like, no, I'm good. Everybody's like, oh, we good. And so Deacon Powell started talking about some things from his past. And all of a sudden, tears is in my eyes. I'm a grown man. What Steve Harvey say? No, not what Steve Harvey said. No, scratch. I'm a grown man. Okay? Grown man. So I start crying. And all of a sudden, my mind goes back to when I'm 17 years old. 17 years old. I was working at a company uh, in Beloit, Wisconsin. 17 years old. Get this, people. That was 1978. I hadn't turned 18 yet. 1978. And I was working at a job in 1978. And I was making $16 an hour. Come on, big somebody said, Big Baller. Yeah. Sixteen dollars an hour in nineteen seventy-eight. Yeah. Man, I was the dude. Don't even talk about my name. Just say the dude is into the room. He's a dude. The dude. All right. I was making big money, seriously. Yeah. And now, now what happened was I hadn't I hadn't got my first check yet. Oh Lord, help me, Jesus. I hadn't got my first check yet. And when I finally was getting paid, I remember laying down in, in the bed. I got my check. You know, back then they gave you paper. Okay, they hand a check to you in the envelope. I don't know what they do now, direct deposit, you know, on your card. And I had, I had a check with me, and I remember laying down before I went to bed, because I worked from midnight to 8 in the morning. I got home about 9 o'clock, had my check with me, and I was laying down, I remember smiling, thinking, wow, I'm going to be able to help my mother. You know, because I know my mom and dad are struggling a little bit financially. You know, I'm 17, I'm living here. Now, I was excited, my first check, and I had decided I'm going to give my mother half of it. I'm going to surprise her. I'm going to surprise her to give her half of it. I want to see the look on her face. Lo and behold, that didn't happen. I got awakened. I got awakened with a fist in my jaw. And I look up and there's a baseball bat held over my head. And I felt like my jaw was broken. I thought I'm dreaming. Like, what's, what's going on here? What, what was that? And my dad is standing over me with his deep voice. He said, boy, your mama said you got all that money and you ain't gave her nothing. And I'm thinking, what time is it? 10 o'clock in the morning. So this got off at 8. The bank ain't even, uh, the bank opened. I didn't even have to, I'm asleep. I'm, I'm trying to, don't y'all understand life? I still got a paper check. 
I can't even, you know, so. But my mama had manipulated my dad. And he fell for it, he fell for it, what they call it, he fell for the okie doke. <laughs> and he came in and attacked me. So I got up. I said, what you got that baseball bat for, daddy? You know, I, ain't, I would never raise my hand to you. And I saw it in his eyes. He was kind of like, yeah, he felt, he felt bad. I saw that. And I got up. I packed all the clothes I could. Got in my car, 1977, Plymouth Fury. And drove off. I was, I was upset. And I was homeless for about a month. But I wasn't calling this. So I had a back seat that slept good. And I was banging. But guess what? During the men's meeting, years later, it came back up. I thought I had gotten over it. It came back up. And I started crying. And uh, uh, Deacon Powell said, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I said, and I looked at my dad. I said, Dad, you remember that day when I explained the whole situation? And, and I, I could tell he was hurt. And he said to me, he said, son, you got to let go of the past. Just get over it. Well, let go of the past is true. Getting over it is true. But you got to say you are sorry. You are accountable because you're the one who inflicted the pain. You're the one who lit the fire that caused the residue. I need you to look me in my face and say, son, I'm sorry. I needed that. But my dad didn't know nothing about that. My dad was old school. He was born in 1933. He didn't know nothing about love and the family and all that. He was never told he was loved. My dad was hung upside down by his legs and beat with a whip. I'm not talking about a belt. With a whip. The whip that master used to beat the slaves. My dad was hung upside by his legs and beat with a whip. Him and his brothers. Wow. By his father. So he didn't know nothing about mercy. He didn't know nothing about I love you. He didn't know nothing about I'm sorry, son. You know, I want you to grow up and be better than me. He had no idea about none of that. So when I asked for it, he didn't have it to give to me. How many of y'all here? Amen. There was a root of bitterness in me. Yes. There was a root of bitterness that I couldn't get rid of. And, and I kept crying. I was so embarrassed because the brothers that never saw me cry. And I was constantly crying. Then my dad said this. He said, no, you know what, son? Forget it. I'm sorry. Just forget it. That was the best he could give me. And I went home sad. I went home heartbroken, you know, and the Lord had to help me get delivered. And finally, one day, I, when I wasn't least thinking about it, my dad called me and said, son, you know what? He was right. He said, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean, I'm sorry. Just, I just, I'm sorry. And I, it, it was kind of half-butted. Did I say that right? Yeah. It was kind of half-butted. But he meant it. That's the best he knew to do. You can only do the best that you know to do. And I received it, mother. And then I said, thank you, dad. I said, I love you. And then there goes another one. He said, okay, son. I love you, dad. All right, son. We're talking to dad. I love you. Okay, son. He couldn't say it. I was almost 50 years old before my dad told me he loved me. I kept saying it. I love you, dad. Finally, I said, I love you, too. And after that, it was, it was cracking. He just said it all the time. It was cracking. But I had a root bitterness in me. That root was there. And when that root of bitterness is there, look, people of God, you may think you're delivered, you may think you're okay, you may think you're fine, but if that root of bitterness is there, and you dealt with somebody who had bad, bad family values, and now you come from a different value set, and you got to deal with this person who never been disciplined, they've never been delivered, they always had everything they want, people were privileged, and their parents, instead of disciplining them, they, 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 they enabled them. And now you got to deal with them, and you're dealing with this person who's all whacked up in the brain, and you ain't so clear yourself, and now two broke people can't fix nothing. Yes. If two people are broke, how's something going to be fixed? Mm -hmm. You say, well, I need a man to help me. No, you need God to help you. You need to get yourself straight with God, because there ain't nothing that a man can do that God can't do. Amen. Man, did I just say that? Yes. yes. <sighs> Forget me, brother. Brother, <laughs> Forgive me, brother. I'll make it up later. <laughs> I'm just saying. But the truth is, there is nothing a human being can do for us that God can't do. So if you're looking for um, justice, or you're looking for recompense, or you're looking for recourse from a human being, stop doing it. Stop doing it. Some of us have bitterness, a root of bitterness from people who are going on to be with the Lord, and we're still holding on to it. How's that? You can't compete with a dead guy. You're in love with a woman who's in love with a dead guy. You can't compete with that, bro. You toast. You a toast. Best thing you can do is die. And then you get some of that. You die too. You, you, I mean, you can be able to hear it, but you know, I write your letter to the grave. I, put, I throw something in your casket, hey, bro. She in love. <laughs> so throw it in your casket. I don't know. But I'm saying we can't compete with that. There are some things that we have.
have in us that need to be pulled up out of us. Read that in verse. Uh, I thought I said verse. I just said verse. You just said Hebrews. I just said Hebrews. Okay, the next time I call out a book, I want y'all to get in the spirit and tell me where I'm going. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Watch the word here. I want you to hear this word because it's applicable. Hebrews chapter, what verse I want? One. Verse 15. 15. Hebrews 12 and 15. Now hear this. Hear the scripture. The scripture is talking about exactly what I'm explaining right now. And there are things that we all need. People of God, if you've ever been a sinner before, you need help. You need help. We can't just act like we're above help. Say to God, guess what? I need help. Look at somebody and say, I need help. I need help, help, people. Look what did Paul do? Paul went to the third heavens. The Bible said, Paul said, I knew a man about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. He said, such a one was caught up where? Into the third heaven. In the the original language, he said, the highest heaven. Because heaven ain't just a flat place. Oh, don't make me change the subject. Heaven ain't just a flat place. Heaven has levels to it. You know how many levels it got? Twelve levels. There's twelve foundations in the city. There's thirty, sixty, one hundred fold. Every fourth level is a fold. Thirty, four more, sixty, four more, one hundred. I'm changing the subject and I'm trying not to do it. But he said I was caught up to the highest heaven. And when he came back from being in the highest heaven, you know what he said? Brethren, for me. A nigga, I mean, in words, you just came from the highest heaven. How do you need prayer? You know why? Because as long as you're in the human body, y'all might need some help. You might need some deliverance. Wouldn't it be beautiful if we had a life with no residue, where we could forgive people, where your ex that you used to date, your, your, your ex-wife could come in and sit in the church while you preach a year ago, and the Lord says, What you do? <sighs> anyway, say, thank God. And you, what, what is that? Why you gotta be stuck? Why you gotta cause somebody walk in? Roscoe walk in and now you can't even sing no more. What's going on? Roscoe walking in and all you can think about is chicken and Right, stop. <laughs> Strike that from the record. <laughs> now check this out. No, seriously. What, what is that? Y'all know when you have something against somebody, when you have something with somebody and you see them in the grocery store? Y'all know that thing, right? It's, I can't explain this that. That thing that you feel. Oh, like I got a couple of witnesses like, yeah, I felt that before. Uh-uh. But you know what the goal is? The goal is to be free. They might feel that thing, but you don't feel nothing. You're free. When you're free, then you don't have anything to be hindered by. Hebrews 12, 15. Let's see what the words. I got seven minutes and 14 seconds. I'll be done. Read. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Looking diligently, lest any man what? Fail of. Will you? And thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator. Or any, any what root of bitterness do what spring up and trouble you. And trouble you. Hold on now. Let's check this out. Now we're reading King James's what version, version of the Bible. What did I just say? King James version. Now that's one thing. That's the one thing that we, we we tend to forget. Now you know the Bible itself is the number one selling book in the history of all mankind. Is the Bible, all right? Now, do you know the most expensive book ever sold was the Gutenberg Bible? And they, they sold it for over $3 million for one copy. Wow. $3 million. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know what was in it. They had a house, a car, food. I don't know what was in there. But it, they, they sold it for over $3 million for one copy. Now, now, the Word of God, King James what? Version. Now, when you read it in the original language, because whether you know it or not, I got news for you. The Bible wasn't written in English. Am I right right? What, what language was it written in? Hebrew. Written in Hebrew, and then Aramaic, and then Greek, and one more, and then Latin. All right? That's the translation of the scripture. Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, and Latin. So when you look at the translation of the scripture, and you find out that King James's version is a translation of a translation. It's not even a translation of the original text. So I know I'm messing up now, but it's just too bad. I got the microphone in my hand. It ain't even an original. It's just a translation of a translation. So how do I know whether I'm reading this right? Because you got the Holy Ghost, right? The Holy Ghost will lead and guide you where? Into all truth. So you ain't got to worry about King James that much. Just be dependent upon the Spirit of God in you, and he'll lead you where? To all truth. So, root of bitterness. What's the Greek word for root? Read the definition. Check out the definition of the word for root. Man, this is, when I started reading this, I said, Lord, why do you want to step on my toes? I'm the one going to be preaching. I ain't supposed to be getting God. I'm supposed to be getting them. The 
Lord, so now, son, you need this too. It makes for a better word. What? It, it oh, yes, 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 yes. Read. What does it say? The, the original word is pronounced hritza. Right, hritza. What is it? A root, that which like a root springs from a root, uh -huh. a sprout, a uh -huh. shoot, metaphorically offspring. Oh, what, 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 what? Offspring? So that means we are transferring our soul ties and our spiritual deformities to our offspring? Did it just say that? And it says progeny, right? Or your progeneration. Or the progenerator is dropping these things down to the other generations. Do y'all know that a woman with a wounded spirit can pass that wounded spirit to her child? Y'all didn't know these things? The child come out wounded in the spirit and don't even know why. Well, look, people, we got to know that there is a spiritual realm, and we need to get to that spiritual realm in order to get all this root out of us. Read. Keep reading. Go to read, read the definition of the word bitterness. I like this. A root of bitterness. Read the definition for the word bitterness. Check this out. The word is pronounced. And we're not reading out of Western Dictionary either. Because Western Dictionary don't give you a good interpretation of God's word. Sometimes you may get a good interpretation, but don't use what don't Google it and see what it means. Now read the original language. All right. Which is from Strong's Concordance. From Strong's Concordance and Thayer's also. Read what it say. So it's called the word is picria, uh -huh. and it's bitter gall. Bitter gall. Extreme wickedness. Extreme wickedness. Hold it. Now what is that? Extreme wickedness. Read. A bitter root, and so producing a bitter fruit. Oh, a bitter root which produces what? A bitter fruit. You can pass that to your child. Husbands, you can pass it to your wife. You can pass it to your children. If you're married, husband and wife together, and your children, all they do is see you fighting and yelling at one another, they're going to have bitter fruit. Are y'all feeling the brother today? Jesus said, he talked about, he said in St. John 15, I am the true vine, and my father is what? The husband man. Every branch in me that brings forth fruit. Now, if you branch in him, your fruit is not going to be bitter. Your fruit is not going to be bitter. It's not going to be wicked. Keep reading. I'm sorry. Give me some more definition. A crudity. A what? A crudity. A crudity. I know what that means. What do it mean? It means to have a irritatingly strong and un and unpleasant mm. taste or smell. Y'all hear that? Uh, a what? Strong was a, a irritatingly strong and unpleasant, unpleasant taste, taste or, or smell. smell, especially poison, is what it says. Y'all feel that? You ever been? Uh, now hear me now. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to discourage anybody. You ever been around somebody and every time you leave them, you feel depressed? Every time you get in their presence, or every time you talk to them, you hang up the phone, you feel this law in your skull. What is this? You go around their house, you go around their family, every time you go, and when you walk away, you feel like, what is this on me? You know what that is on you? It's that bitter poison that's in their spirit, and you're feeling it. Hear me, people, a root of bitterness. Do you know that roots... There, there are roots that, that, that run real deep. Did y'all know that? A root of a tree is not just three feet long. A root of a tree, not, well, not all of them, they're just three feet, ten feet. No, no, no. Roots go real deep. The, the deepest root I believe ever, ever discovered is a, a tree called a shepherd's tree. Y'all hear that? It's called a shepherd's tree, and it has the deepest roots, right? It's in the Kalahari Desert, and the roots are almost 250 feet long. 250 feet long. Now hear this now. Hear me. The things that are in the natural realm are parallel to the things that are in the spirit realm. Are y'all feeling it, brother? So when it's 250 feet long in the natural realm, the Bible said a day to God is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Y'all feel that? So to God, a 24-hour period is equal to a thousand years in the mind of God. So 250 feet ain't just 250 feet. That means that those tentacles can stretch a long way and touch a whole lot of people. You poison a whole lot of people with your poison, and there are some poisonous people who don't even know that they're poisonous. To them, it's normal. They've been that way for so long that it's the normal way of being, and if you begin to try to help them or you try to correct them, they will attack you. They will attack you. Oh, ask me how I know. They'll attack you. When you try to say, listen, I want to help you. I want to help you get delivered. I want to help you. They will get delivered from what? I ain't got no problem. They'll attack you. Read. I don't know what you're supposed to be reading. <laughs> uh, 
lest any root of bitterness from enough trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Go to Matthew 13. We're almost done, folks. I'll be done in seven minutes, 14 seconds. What is it? Matthew 13. What is it? And now also, the axe is laid unto the root. He said, John the Baptist said, the axe is laid where? To the root of the tree. The only way to get serious deliverance is you've got to cut the tree from the root. My brothers, my brothers, my brothers. Don't go by your wife or your woman or whoever can order. Now, this is 2021, 20, 20, right? So let me go on just be politically correct. Your significant other, whatever gender they may be. Don't go and just buy a cake or ice cream and say, here you go. No, repent. We got that bag. Brothers got that bag. Instead of saying we're sorry, we're going to get a gift. Here you go. <laughs> Anything other than, I'm sorry, and you, here's what you really going to get. I was wrong. Oh, no. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry for I'm sorry for being sorry. I'm sorry. What you do? I'm sorry. Just accept it. Right. We ain't going to say we was wrong now. You know, it takes a real man to say, you know, baby, I was wrong. It was me. It was my fault. You know what? That don't diminish us. That don't make us little. It doesn't. It really makes you more of a man. It makes you more of an adult when you can say, I was wrong. Especially, especially when you might not even be wrong. Ooh, man. That's another level. That's another level. So Matthew said, the axe is laid where? At the root of the tree. That's the only way to get rid of bitterness. Only way to get delivered is to let it come from the root of your spirit. You got to yield it up. You got to give it up. How many of y'all been in deliverance service? Y'all been in deliverance service? Where they bring out the buckets? You see the buckets they bring out? Yes, Lord. Now, I'm not saying you need a bucket every time. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying sometimes it can get nasty. I remember I was at a house in Atlanta, Georgia, went to visit a pastor, had a couple friends with me, and uh, the pastor said, hey, before y'all go, let's pray. I'm like, hey, man, hallelujah, pray. And one of the guys that was with me, they started praying. He just relaxed about throwing up. I was like, hey. He threw up all over the carpet. Then when he got buckets, and he was out. I'm like, I've been kicking him with this dude now for a few weeks. I, he's from Atlanta. I just met him, but he was a preacher. I'm like, what is going on here? Afterwards, he was calm. He said, man, wow, what happened? I said, nothing, man. God just did something. What? what that, 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 I wasn't throwing up. I was up uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. But he was calm after that. His spirit was relaxed. He was at ease in time. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He was at ease. Because he was getting delivered from those things that were in the root of the tree. The axe had to be laid at the root of the tree. The scripture said the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Able to divide the soul from the spirit. Sometimes when your soul and your spirit is one, that's a problem. That's a problem. Your soul got to be separated from your spirit so that your spirit can begin to take over your physical body and not your mind. Oh, that's another subject. I ain't got time. I only got seven minutes. I don't have time. But understand that when, when deliverance come, you become to be a whole new person. I remember I went to church one night back in the 80s, like 1984. I went to a church service and there was a guy preaching. I still know the guy. He lives in Russia now. And he's a great preacher in Russia. And he was preaching a message. And, and this is when I first began to experience the Hebrew language and the Aramaic language. So the guy was preaching. And while he preached, he said, Baruch Hashem Yeshua, Hamasiah Hasai Shalom. And I was like, Ooh. And it went into my I'm like, ah! Oh! It scared me. You know why? Because that was my calling. I didn't know it then. He was preaching, mother, and while he was preaching, he said, better sheep on the ride of the heat, some higher candidates. And I was like, ah, oh, what is that? I didn't know that God had called me to be a Hebrew scholar. I didn't know that God had called me to speak Hebrew. I didn't even know that my bloodline in the natural is Hebrew. I didn't know it. But when he started speaking that stuff, it was in the I can't explain what it did to me. He touched the root of my calling, and I responded. And I went home that night. I went home, and my older children's mother, she didn't go to church with me. I walked in the house, and I was, y'all hear that music playing? That was me. I walked in, before your time, Brian, you wouldn't up yet. I walked in, <laughs> and I sat down on the couch. Y'all hear that music? That's where I was. And this is what she said to me. She said, she said, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting all strange? <laughs> but it wasn't that I was acting strange. I heard my destiny. I heard my destiny. And I, and I, and I became in tune with my destiny. And I was like, Lord, what is this? 
What is this that I heard tonight? The word of God went out of that brother's mouth and went into my chest. I heard what they call in Israel, I heard the shofar. Are y'all familiar with the shofar? I heard the shofar in my spirit. The scripture said the last days, is in the last days, uh, the Lord will come with the voice of God, the trump of God, and the voice of the archangel. That was the shofar. I heard it. And it began to deliver me. It began to purge me and change me into a whole new person. The man being Christ is what? A new creature. Old things have passed away. All right, we got one more verse. Mark 11. Last verse. Everybody say last verse. Last verse. I hope. I hope. I hope. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> I got seven minutes. Mark chapter 11 and verse 20. Okay? Check this out. Now, my, now this is what my, my point today is to, is to realize that you might need help. You might have a root of bitterness in you. You might have a root of bitterness. Women, I'm going to tell you, sisters. Okay, brothers, here come payback, brothers. Here come payback. Okay, y'all don't like me. Here come payback. <clears throat> I'm going to get my status back, okay? Women will hold some bitterness. They'll hold on to it. They will. Somebody just told me a couple weeks ago, they said, man, I'll hold a grudge in a minute. Somebody just told me that. I ain't calling on name teacher. I love you too much. They said, I'll hold a grudge. I'll get you. And she said, she said, I'll, she said I'll, I'll just dump you. Keep done. Y'all know women can do that. They'll ice you and be through with you. You be down with a number. What the fuck? Why are you going through? What's this? You're blocked. Quick. Done. So done. Okay. <laughs> women can do that. Y'all be done with us. But check this out, though. Check this out. One reason why women are like that is because of their anatomy. Because of where they came from. Where they come from? They came from the inside. They need security. They need to be covered. They need to be protected. They need to know that everything is well. They came from the inside. And, they, you know, they're, they're emotional. And they carry things. You ever got a baby? Anybody ever had a baby? Look, you hold that baby for 40 weeks. Don't mess with me. I got a couple children. 40 weeks. You get pregnant for 40 weeks, right? And you hold that baby. A man give you a seed, and you produce that seed, and boop, up comes a baby, right? So that means when a woman is hurt, man, she'll hold that thing, and she'll, she'll birth it. Boom! <laughs> right there. Y'all be having a great time and, and you know, an argument break out. You know what she'll say? Boop! I remember three years ago, it was April the 16th, 2010. You said, and tell you exactly what you said. That's why we don't erase messages. <laughs> See? Y'all heard brothers, y'all heard that? Come on. Gotcha. I'm like, why is y'all like that? That's the way they're created. And the, and the scripture says, oh man, the scripture says, he that finds a wife finds what? A good thing. And obtains favor from the Lord. So it's just talking about going to find somebody. And it's just about going and get a 10. Everybody can't get a 10. You know what I mean? Everybody can't. <clears throat> but you know, you, you just, um, you know, it don't mean just go find somebody. It means the word Matsar doesn't mean to go find a wife. It means to discover her. To discover who she is even after you're married. Because you can be married for years and still don't know your wife. A woman will not reveal herself to you easily. She might give you her body, but brother, you ain't got her mind, and you ain't nowhere near her spirit. Amen. All right, I better stop before I get into some serious trouble. I'm going to say one more thing since I got seven minutes. I'm going to say one more thing. I was preaching in Virginia. Now I don't call the name of the city. I was in Virginia, and there were some pastors that needed counseling. Pastor and wife. So I went to their house to counsel them. And I sat down with him, pastor and wife, he was pastoring the church, okay? And so I said to them, I said, listen. So I started talking, asking a question, trying to probe to see what the problem was. And so I said this to the man. I said, brother, I said, okay, so how can I say this skillfully? How's your love life? Okay? Y'all, I mean, y'all, y'all feel it, brother? Mm -hmm. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Yeah. All right? You understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I said, how's your love life? And the brother said, it's what he needs to say. <laughs> I would say about eight or nine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know? I thought, oh, 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 good stuff. So I said to her, I just love that. She said, a two. <laughs> Are y'all in the same room? <laughs> How is you at nine or ten and you at two? He looked at her, you should have saw his face. I wish I had a cell phone camera back then. I was like, click it. <laughs> was that sound? Click it. I mean, his face was like, what? Two? You're like, I'm having a business. No, you ain't. You ain't having business, brother, because my soul is hurt. 
My emotions are scarred. My heart is wounded. And all you got is my physical body, but you don't have me. Woo! I just got I just got out of trouble with the brother. Jump right back in the frying pan. I'm just saying, that's how a woman is. You think you got her. Oh no. But a real man knows how to bring healing to his gift. Ooh, I think I better stop right there. Hallelujah. I don't want to step on my own toes. I'll be like Pastor Bobby. I'm not Pastor Bobby. You got dogs on you. So we, we, I think he'll be here. Will he be here next week? I think he'll be back. Will he come back there next week? I think he'll be back next week. He had dog soldiers, y'all pray for him. He had dog, his dog is doing good now, but he's going to have to put a boot on it for a while with a crutch. Y'all feel that? All right. But he'll be back, though. I talked to him. He's doing great. He's doing great. So listen, saints. If there's a root of bitterness in you, acknowledge it. I'm going to tell you something. Most of us, we know we got issues. We know we need help. But it's just, the problem is, there ain't hardly nobody to confess to. That I'm serious. Everybody you talk to will run and tell somebody else. Or they'll keep it for a little while until they get mad at you. Then all your stuff be on Facebook. <laughs> like, wait a minute, I thought that was private. It was until you crossed me. Now nah, everything is a goal. They just are waiting on the opportunity for someone to come saying something about you, and then they're like, well, what she told me is. This. Come on, man. I mean, that, what, what kind of spirit? That's a bad spirit also. When people are when people are able to come and tell you all the bad stuff, there's something wrong with you. Hear me? Because when they know your spirit is right, you won't be the one getting all the garbage. They'll come to you for help. They won't come to you for gratification and say, who have you heard? They won't come to you like that. They'll come to you and say, hey, I need help. I need help. I don't get all the good juicy gossip. I don't. I used to. I don't get the good juicy gossip anymore. You know why? Because don't come to me talking about somebody and don't look, don't tell them what I said, but they did this. I'm going to be like, oh, what did they do? Hold on, let me press record. Okay, go ahead. Repeat. They'll stop coming to you. When they realize that you ain't the blue bin or the black bin, they'll stop coming to you or the green bin if you live out east. They'll stop coming to you. But when they think you're the garbage dispenser or you're the garbage, they'll bring you all the mess because they don't tell nobody. And you'll be like, that ain't going to tell nobody as soon as they leave. <laughs> Carol, have you heard? Something is wrong with that. We should not be progenerators of gossip. No people of God. We shouldn't be tail bears. We should be helpers one to another. We should be interceding for one another. Y'all feel that? If you know two people that are at odds of one another, you need to be interceding for them. How many of y'all feel that? How many of y'all know what intercession is? Who don't know what intercession is? You don't know what intercession is? You don't know? Okay, you know you know what intercession is. You raise it. Well, you still know. You might as well. Let me tell you something. Here's what intercession does. Intercession, it brings, come here, brother. Stand here and face the camera. I need your help. Let me show you what intercession does, and we'll be done. I got seven minutes. We'll be done. Come here. Come, come here, Rocky. Rocky, I need you to be, you're going to be Jesus, okay? <laughs> Jesus is living. <laughs> okay, Rocky, going to be Jesus. Okay, I need one more person. And Sheila, the deck. Come forth. I'm going to show you all what intercession does. Rocky, you get You're another chance for this. Now, I want you to hold your hands. Y'all hold hands. Hold hands. Hold hands. Now, here's what an intercessor does. An intercessor is Mother Sheila and Elder Gloria got problems. They got big issues. They mad one another, okay? They mad one another, talk about each other's head. Who she thinks she lost the bridge in her head? What she thinks she eats somebody. And Mother Sheila said, I threw a look at her. Got her hair all curled up like a young girl. What she think? You know, I was just stupid. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, look, her mother comes to church every Sunday. Every Sunday. Try to be fly. That's you still say fly? Fly is fly not in? Yeah, fly's good. Fly's good, okay, okay. okay. Still trying to be fly, all right? But now here's what the Lord does, or an intercessor. I want you to slowly connect their hands together. An intercessor brings them together. Brings them, y'all join both hands. No, no, you gotta do it. An intercessor, yes, an intercessor brings them together. An intercessor is a reconciler. Y'all hear that? They bring peace. All right, all right, Jesus, step out the way. They bring them together and they step aside. Oh, come on now, hallelujah. I'm sorry to talk about the praise in the hell, I'm sorry. And they come together. That's what the intercessor does. Y'all get my hand. That's what, all right, now, y'all can stop the love. Now, okay, all right. 
But that's what an intercessor does. And that, y'all can take your seat. All right. But that's what an intercessor does. An intercessor brings people together. You ain't, you're not one that's receiving the garbage and the gossip and, and when you say prophet, calling somebody else. No. You're one. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. That was the word saying it. They should be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. And that's what we ought to be. So if you got a root of bitterness and you know you need help, seek somebody who can help you. Yes, Hear me, people of God. Yes. How many, sometimes you can think about things. And you think about them and they still hurt. Anybody got anything like that? You think about it and it still hurts. It still hurts. You know, mother, you got stuff you think about it still hurts? Okay. Hallelujah. It still hurts. And we got some mature people in. I'm 60. I'm 60. See, I think about something that still hurts. I'm good. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying there's people. There's people that got things they think about it and it still hurts. Now, it still hurts because the residue is still there. You need service pro. How many of y'all know what service pro is? Service pro is the company, if you look on the TV commercial, they say, as though it never happened. Oh, yeah. That's I see that commercial? Yeah. It says, as though it never happened. Mm -hmm. Service pro is the Holy Ghost. You come in and wash it clean. Right. God will make you clean. How many of y'all remember that? Uh -huh. Inside, y'all keep going. That's a kind of walker. To make you clean inside. And all the residue will be gone. So if you can think about something and it still hurts, now hear this, hear this. If you can think about something and it still hurts, and you're married, it affects you and your spouse. It's not in respect, it, 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 it affects your children. So that root of bitterness needs to be cut up from the root. Yahshua cursed a fig tree. We didn't read that verse, did we? No. I said last verse, but I didn't read it. He cursed the fig tree. All right? Read that real quick. Mark 11, 20. 20. Is that what it is? Mark 11, 20. Read that. What does it say? Um, do you want me to read about what happened first or just about Just be led by your spirit. Do what you want. All right. Do what you want. Don't pay me no mind. Just do no thing. All right. Well, I'll just start at 20 then. Oh, no, but give us the back story. I'll just follow it. Back story, back story. Come on. Who right here? Me and you. Yo, I'll handle this. <laughs> okay, so let's start at first. 11. 11 and 11. Read. 11 and 11. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. Uh -huh. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Here it is. This is where it starts, right here. And seeing a fig tree afar off, mm -hmm. having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything. Now from a distance. He saw the leaves were green. Y'all feel this? From a distance, it looked like a great situation. Y'all feel that? Y'all see a guy from the distance, did he look buff? He's like, oh man, it's a buff dude. Look at him. From a distance. He's six feet five and he's buff. He got red hair. He okay. looks good. Okay. <laughs> Read. He came and happily he might find anything thereon. Uh huh. And when he came to it, and when he got closer, he found nothing but leaves. It was empty. For Hold them. on. How many ladies been fooled by a guy coming home talking all the right stuff, singing all the right songs, singing everything, all the good, all the good, you know, music coming out of his mouth? You know, I'm going to love you, love you, love you. Y'all remember that? Very white? Yeah. yeah. All the good words. You're like, oh. <laughs> and later on, you find out he ain't right. got no fruit. All they got is talk. Jay Brown said, talk is cheap. You're talking loud, saying nothing. Read. For the time of figs was not yet come. The time of or figs was not yet. yet. Okay, read. And Jesus answered and said unto it. He said unto what? It. Hold it now. The apostles followed this guy for three years. They seen him talk to the wind. They seen him talk to the sea. Because what did he say? Peace, be still. Are y'all with me? Now he's talking to trees. No, they probably said, this cat here. He, 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 the Bible says he said that he spoke to it. He looked at the tree. Now, if I, if I look at this drum set and say, you were never, I know y'all are going to think, apostle, y'all pray for apostle. He's losing it. <laughs> but he spoke to the tree. 
And he, what did he say to the tree? No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. He said, no man is going to eat from you hereafter for how long? Forever. Read. And his disciples heard it. His disciples heard it. Read. And they come to Jerusalem. His disciples heard him say this. Read. Let me, let me skip down to 20 now. What verse 20 say? We're almost done. Y'all give me just a few minutes. What does it say? And in the morning, uh -huh. as they passed by, as they walked by, they saw the fig tree. They saw the fig tree dried up, dried up from, where? The from the root. He spoke to the tree, but guess what? He didn't speak to the branches. He didn't speak to the vine. He didn't speak to the leaves. What did he speak to? The root. So you gotta find the origin of the issue. A lot of times people go into counseling and they deal with all the surface stuff, but they don't deal with the foundation. Let me tell you something. If the foundation is corrupt, it's going to keep on seeping back up to the top. We can talk about all the all, all this stuff that's on the surface and all this and that, but we ain't dealing with the foundation. We leave this stuff undone. That's the root of bitterness. Man, check this out. I didn't mean to say this, but it's coming out of my mouth now and ain't nobody trying to stop a brother. But look at, look at the great country that we live in. Look at all the stuff. 45 mass shootings within the last month. That is a root of bitterness. Let me tell you something. Racism didn't start last week. Prejudice didn't start last week. It's the root of bitterness. This country was founded on pilferage, stealing, thievery, lying, and murder. Am I right or right? I mean, come on, man. The people came from Europe, and they took stuff from the Native Americans. They brought Africans over and enslaved them and made them work. They did everything unconsciously wrong and guilty. That's the foundation of this country, and the root is still there. How do I know? Because the racism is prevalent. Only way it's going to stop is somebody cut it from the root. We need somebody that's a that's a, uh, a progenitor or somebody that's a relative or somebody that's in that bloodline to stand up and say enough is enough. Just because of the color of your skin, I'm not better than you. And I got news for y'all folks. If you look at the word bitterness, the word root of bitterness, the word bitterness talks about the color of skin. It, it, it speaks of judgment based on skin color. Root of bitterness. And you talk about America, the great country, make it great again. Oh, yeah. When was it great? How wait. You know when it was great? Before 1490. Before people came over here and killed it. Oh, Apostle, you're going to get it for this. I don't care. Throw me in jail. I still preach. That made no difference. The truth will make you free, won't it? Root of it. That's how come you can't even drive on the freeway. You get pulled over now. You got to just bow your head and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, master. Yes, sir. Or else you get shot. Oh, man, I'm in the flesh. Now, y'all didn't make me stop. But I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You get a knee on your neck. And you can beg and plead. And they still won't stop. You know why? Because the root is bitter. And it still exists. Oh, let's stand. I, I, I need to stop now. I tell you, let's stand up. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap, please. Give the Lord a hand clap. Any root of bitterness. Hallelujah. Pablo got you, brother. Pablo got you. Hallelujah.